And here's the explainer for uh, version 6 of question 3 in spring of 2011. Um, first question is to calculate the uh, internal rate of return. Um, by now, you know that you can just go ahead and take the uh, ratio of uh, the benefit over the cost, making sure you get rid of that negative sign, raised to the power of 1 on the life of the asset, which is in this case 2, subtract 1, and that should get you the internal rate of return in that special case where um, you have a cost or benefit in time period n, and the only other one that you have is in time period 0. So you end up with a 16.1 uh, nine uh, percent internal rate of return for asset A. Uh, question number three is the next easiest one to get to because this is just your exclusive choice criteria. Pick the biggest of the present worth. You can see the biggest one is supposed to be asset D, which is your best asset if you're just going to buy one of them and let it, you know, burn out. So in that case, you'll get benefits for three periods, but that's the best individual thing you can get uh, if you don't have to have an asset working all the time. Question number two. Uh, requires you to have an asset at all times over 12 years. And so the idea is you could take an asset like C, which lasts four years, uh, buy one of them, let it burn out in period four, buy another one, let it burn out in period eight, buy another one, let it burn out in period 12. And each one of those years, you could calculate what the annual worth was, and it'll tell you the benefits that you're seeing in each of those 12 years. Now, please note you can't add them together to get the, the, uh, the present worth. It just doesn't work that way. Um, you're not discounting the future values that are there. Um, but if you make those calculations, you'll see that the annual worth for asset A is uh, 1.33. For asset B, it is 0.09. For asset C, it's a, it's a negative number, so it doesn't matter. And for asset D, it ends up being 1.02. And if I remembered it right, yep, asset A is the one that provides you with the greatest benefits per period. And so that ends up being your best answer for uh, question number two. The final question is about the internal rate of return criteria. And, uh, well, all you have to do is first order them from lowest initial investment to highest and then eliminate all those assets with internal rates of return less than 20. We just get rid of all of them and there's no need to uh, choose any of these assets because none of them are acceptable. Well, that's the explainer for uh, question number three, version six in spring of 2011.